Our panelists are going to be discussing exploring hyper automation's impact on innovative businesses. I'd like to begin by inviting the moderator for this panel. Let's put our hands together for Mr. Ramesh Padala, Managing Director, BCG. Could we have a round of applause, please, as we welcome Mr. Padala to the stage? Come on, ladies and gentlemen, make some noise for Sir. So I request you if you could sit on this chair on the side. And our panelists for this discussion, please welcome Vrijesh, Vrijesh Nagatan, CDI, CIDTO Mariko. A round of applause for Mr. Nagatan. Welcome, sir. Thank you for joining us. And Fani Mitra B, CDIO Dr. Reddy's Laboratories. Welcome, sir. Hi, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ramesh. Uh, I am an MD and partner at uh, BCG. I'm part of the BCGX team. Uh, we, we do a lot of uh, innovative build programs uh, within BCG. And uh, with me, I have Fani. Maybe you can start with yourself. Yeah. Hi, everyone. My name is Fani Mitra. I head the digital at uh, Dr. Reddy's. Uh, as many of you know, Dr. Reddy's is a Indian pharma company, been around for almost 40 plus years. Uh, happy to be here. Thanks, ZT, for having us here. Um, hello, I'm Vrijesh, and uh, I lead the IT and digital technology function for Marico. I'm sure, like, you know, you would be consumers of Marico's products. So, yeah, thanks. Okay. So, let's get it started. So, uh, you know, the topic is hyper automation. Uh, so, maybe you can help define what is hyper automation. Uh, Vrijesh, you can start. Sure. And you know, maybe you can also contextualize it with <clears throat> Merico or maybe some previous experiences that you have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so if we look at the trajectory of how things um, have evolved or are evolving is, it would have started with, you know, automating tasks, so to speak, right? And how do you do it at a task level? And as the series of tasks start getting together, coming together, etc., then you get into what you would call as a process automation. And with more particular ecosystem getting richer with newer technologies, etc., we are now entering into this realm called as hyper automation. So that's how, at a very broad level, uh, you know, I can. Uh, paint a, uh, you know, how do you say, outlay, uh, you know, overall outlay of it. And uh, funny, you want to add anything? Yeah. So I think we, we looked at it in three different buckets, uh, mm. uh, Ramesh, right? So the first one is in terms of what do you want to automate? Mm. Because a lot of companies uh, really struggle with identifying the opportunities for automation because you just can't pick a bad process, pick a bad space. It doesn't create business impact and automate it. So the first option is to actually look at uh, you know, the discovery or the process or the opportunity for the process automation. The second one is broadly what we are now calling as intelligent automation. Uh, components of AI ML combined with RPA, for instance, is the second bucket that we say, which is primarily on intelligent automation. And the third one is uh, even when we automate certain tasks, like the way uh, Rajesh is explaining, uh, the workflow doesn't change. So the decisions are not any better the organizational business impact is not any better because you have not connected the workflow itself. Mm -hmm. So the third component for us is the intelligent orchestration, as we call it. Mm -hmm. The low-code, no-code platforms, workflows, etc., come there. So the three buckets of uh, op opportunity discovery, intelligent automation, and intelligent orchestration mm -hmm. is how we put together and call it like yeah. the overall hyper-automation frame. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, I mean, you mentioned discovering new ideas, right? So... Uh, are you going about it in a very structured manner? Like, like how are you going about mm -hmm. finding out ideas, innovating in this area? So I would say it would work both bottom up as well as top down. So the bottom up would be to get into what you would call as a task mining, which is basically at an individual level, what people do. So you will put an agent on the desktop, etc. Try to, you know, read the click streams and all of those things. So that is what is also called as task mining. 
and at the same time you would also have process mining which is to say that you take a whole bunch of data let's say on an order to cash process and you kind of are able to read the particular points in terms of 70% of your flow goes through these seven steps in the process or 30% outliers are along this and then you take a call what parts of these should be done can be done without a human being but by a bot and that is exactly where you know the orchestration layer comes in and in addition to the orchestration layers you would also want to try in try and put in a particular business rules engine or a decision matrix to say that how exactly each of the next stage of the process needs to get kicked in so that's the bottom up way the top down way is to typically go have these particular discovery workshops with people and try and understand what are their pain points what are the opportunity areas so that's how you try to do